deep in the North Wales countryside lies an engineering marvel from another age. More than 200 years ago, engineers in Britain were building extraordinary things, including this by my hero Thomas Telford, an iron aqueduct high above the River Dee. It's a sensational structure. Sir Walter Scott, the great writer, came and he called it the stream in the sky. Thomas Telford was arguably Britain's first great civil engineer, the Colossus of Rhodes. His brilliant highways, bridges and canals were the envy of the world. Writing the story of his life, I've been searching. Where did the vision and daring of those amazing 19th century British engineers come from? And how do we get it back today? The noise of Farringdon in central London, a world away from the Pont Casalte aqueduct. When I wasn't writing history, I worked in government trying to get stuff built. I found the politics and bureaucracy maddening. What would Telford have made of it? He had real energy and ambition and he was a searcher. He was constantly doing really wonderful things. He never stopped. Like later people like Brunel, his, Telford produced incredible detailed notes and sketches. Brunel did, Stevenson did. They had it. And we have people like that today out there at it the whole time, but the system is so blanketing down on people that there are so many things that you've got to satisfy. Lawyers, my God, they're a problem. Accountants, we just got to cut through all that and so you, get on with good things. So if you list the enemies of modern infrastructure, it'll be accountants, lawyers, what, civil servants? Yeah, sure. People who just prefer to say no to things. How deep is it? Um, but deep underneath Alan's office, Europe's biggest engineering project, Crossrail, is getting built at last. And Chloe Etheridge, who joined four years ago as an apprentice, thinks we can learn from it. There's a lot of big projects coming up and I think that this here at Crossrail has been a good kickstart to, to bring in the skills through, particularly through apprenticeships and, and investing in young people that the, these skills and experience can be carried on to the big, next big projects here in the UK. And when you started engineering, did your friends sort of wonder why on earth you were doing it? Or were they, are they envious now? They must, have, they must think this is the most amazing, cool thing to be involved in. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think sometimes people don't understand what we do. Yeah. So I take pride in explaining what I do as my career and, and try and get more people interested. I worked as a special advisor in government with politicians who were excited about infrastructure. They wanted to get on and build it. They wanted to be photographed too in this orange kit with the big hat and the glasses. It's like the village people Westminster style. Forget the wimpy suit and tie, look at the butch diggers and mud, and never forget to point. But sometimes projects turn into a nightmare, like here at London Bridge. As the chair of Network Rail, Peter Hendy's got to totally rebuild the station, even while 54 million people a year continue to use it. So Telford and his, and his successors didn't get it right all the time either. Brunel's Great Western Railway cost two and a half times what he said it would, but look at the result of it. And you have to judge, history will judge it in the long term. Of course we should be better at doing it, but you still need a vision, don't you? Once we led the world, now I think Britain might be getting a bit of that energy back. The stuff that joins things up, keeps us moving, it always matters. Good roads, space on the train, they don't happen by accident. Get it right, like Thomas Telford did, and you create something that lasts centuries.